Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about pointers in C++. Now, a pointer is basically just a type of information that we can work with in our programs. If you've been following along with this course, up to this point, we've been working with all different types of data. So we've been working with things like integers, which are whole numbers. We've been working with like doubles, which are decimal numbers. We've been working with strings and chars, which are like plain text. Um, and in this tutorial, I want to introduce you guys to another type of information we can deal with, which are called pointers. And pointers are basically just memory addresses. So we're going to kind of get into what that means. What is a memory address? We're going to talk about all that stuff. And I'll give you a full introduction into pointers. So over here in my program, I have a few different variables that I created. I have an integer called age, and I gave it a, you know, a value, a double called GPA, and a string called name. Now, all of these are variables in my program. Right? So in other words, all of these are essentially just containers where I'm storing specific information. For my purposes, when I'm writing this program, I'm storing the value 19 inside of this age variable. Right? I'm storing 2.7 inside of this GPA variable. But let's kind of you know go underneath the hood a little bit and talk about what's actually going on here. So in everyone's computer, you have something called your memory. And another word for this would be RAM. So you might have heard people talk about RAM. It stands for random access memory. It's essentially just the active memory that your computer is using when it's running programs. So whenever your computer runs a program, um, it's using RAM. So it's storing information inside of this uh, memory. Let's just say our program, for example. So in the case of this program, if I was to run this program, my computer would actually be using RAM. In other words, my computer is going to use its memory in order to store and keep track of information. In fact, it's going to be storing all of these values inside of its memory. So when I create this variable age and I give it a value, what's actually happening is my program is going to take this value 19 and it's going to store it inside the physical memory of my computer. When I create this double GPA, my computer is going to take this number and it's going to store it physically inside of the memory in my computer. Same goes for that string. And so for all of these different pieces of data, they're all actually getting stored inside of the memory of my computer. So when I write the program, like for my purposes, I just know that 19 is stored inside the age variable. But when we go underneath the hood, 19 is actually stored inside of the computer's memory. So it's physically stored in the memory. Now, one of the cool things about the memory of our computer is there's a bunch of these little containers, right? Each one of these variables, each one of these values is essentially just like inside of one of those containers, right? That's kind of a broad strokes explanation. But you can basically think of it as like this number 19 is stored inside of a container in memory. This uh, value 2.7 is stored inside of a container in memory. And each of the containers inside the memory of my computer where these values are stored has an address. Right? So it has an address which uniquely identifies it. So for example, this value 19 is stored inside the physical memory of my computer and it's stored at a specific memory address. This value 2.7 is stored in the memory of my computer and it's stored at a physical memory address. And so when my program wants to access this value, it can access it by using that memory address. When I want to access the variable, I can just access it using like age or GPA. But when my computer wants to access it, my computer has to access it using the physical memory address. So that's kind of like what's going on. And I want to show you guys um, how we can go ahead and access that physical memory address. So I could actually print it out. I could just say C out. And if I wanted, I could basically print out the memory address where each of these variables are stored. In other words, I could print out the memory address where this value 19 is stored. I could print out the memory address where this value 2.7 is stored. All I have to do is just make an ampersand and then I can type in the name of a variable. So I could type in like age, for example. And what this is going to do is when I put this ampersand here, it's essentially going to tell C++ that I want to print out the memory address where the age variable is stored. In other words, I want to print out the memory address where this value of 19 is stored. So when I run my program, you'll notice over here that I'm getting this kind of crazy number. So it's 0x6afee0. This is a hexadecimal number. Basically, it's just some long number um, that would be very difficult for a human being to remember, um, but the computer is able to remember it just fine. So if you were to go to this physical memory address inside of my computer, you would find the value 19. 
I mean, that's essentially what this is doing, right? So that's basically like where that value 19 lives inside of our memory, right? So if I wanted to access it or change it or modify it, my program can do it using that address. And that's essentially what we're talking about. And in C++, we have a word for these addresses. So we have like a special word that we use when we're talking about addresses. It's called a pointer. So generally, if I'm working in C++ and I want to talk about a memory address, I'm going to talk about pointers. So I would say that this is a pointer, right? So over here, we could say that I'm printing out a pointer. And a pointer is just a type of information. It's just a memory address. So any memory address that we're working with or that we're using inside of our programs is going to be considered a pointer. And the way that we can access the pointer of these variables, or in other words, the way that we can access the memory addresses where these variables are stored is by using this ampersand. So I have a little demonstration I want to show you guys. Um, this is just a block of code that I wrote out before the tutorial. And it's essentially just printing out um, all of the memory addresses for all of these variables. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So you can see over here, I'm essentially just printing out all the individual memory addresses for all of these variables. So we have age, and it's located at this memory address. We have GPA at this memory address and name at this memory address. So all of these memory addresses, if we were to go to them in our like physical RAM and the physical memory of our computer, we would see those values. And again, we would call these pointers. So this is a pointer, this is a pointer. A pointer is just a memory address. That's, it's just a type of data. We're just giving it another name. So that's kind of cool. And that kind of shows you guys how we can access like the memory addresses of these different variables. But we can actually take this a step further. So I wanna show you guys um, another thing that I can do. So I could actually create a variable where I could store the pointer. So over here, like I'm creating an integer variable and inside of it, I'm storing an integer, right? Over here, I'm creating a double variable and I'm storing a double. Over here, I'm creating a string variable, I'm storing a string. Um, and actually, if we want to manage and keep track of the memory addresses or the pointers inside of our programs, we can create a pointer variable. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that. And a pointer variable will basically be just a container where we can store a pointer, right? It's a container where we can store a memory address. Generally, when we're working with memory addresses in our programs, we're not just going to work with random addresses, right? In other words, like I don't know any like meaningful memory addresses off the top of my head. So generally, when we're using memory addresses, we're going to be using the memory addresses of the different variables in our programs. So therefore, when we create an actual pointer variable, in other words, when I create a container where I'm going to store a pointer, I'm generally going to create it based off of one of these variables. So let's go ahead and create a pointer variable that will store the pointer um, for this age variable. I'm just going to say int. And whenever we create a pointer variable, you always want to use this special character, which is going to be the asterisk. And then you want to type in the name of the variable. So I'm just going to call this p age. And a lot of times when you're creating pointer variables, you'll use this lowercase p. And then you'll type out the name of the variable whose memory address you're storing. So I could say int p age is equal to, and now I can just say ampersand age. So remember, when we use this ampersand and then we type out the name of the variable, that gives us the pointer. In other words, that gives us the memory address where the value is stored. So I'm essentially storing this pointer inside of this variable over here called p age. I could do the same thing down here for this double. I could just say double asterisk, and I'm just going to say p gpa. And I'm going to set this equal to ampersand GPA. So now this PGPA pointer variable is storing inside of it a pointer. In other words, it's storing inside of it a memory address, and it just happens to be the memory address of this GPA variable. I could do the same thing for this string down here. So I could say string P name, and actually don't forget to put the asterisk, and I can just set this equal to ampersand name. And now this pointer variable p name is storing the pointer. In other words, it's storing the memory address of this name variable. So now I can actually work with these different pointer values using these pointer variables. So if I was to come down here, I could say c out and I could just print out like p age. And now this is going to go ahead and print out the value that's stored inside of that pointer variable, which is going to be a pointer, um, which should be the memory address of p age. So you can see down there, that's exactly what we get. So that's kind of useful. And, you know, really, I think a lot of times people get 
a little intimidated or maybe confused with pointers. But pointers are really simple. A pointer is just another type of data that we can work with in C++. So, you know, you can work with things like integers, which are whole numbers. You could work with doubles, which are decimal numbers. You could work with uh, strings, which are just a bunch of characters. You could also work with pointers, which are memory addresses. You know, that's all it is. It's just a, a different type of data. And we, when we create a pointer variable, it's just a container where we can store a pointer. That's kind of all it is. Now, I want to point out to you guys, um, whenever I created this pointer variable, you'll notice that I used the data type of the variable that I was pointing to. So this pointer variable is storing the memory address of an integer. Therefore, I said int over here. This pointer variable is storing the address of a double. So I said double over here. Same thing down here. This is storing the memory address of a string. So I said string over here. And that's basically just what you have to do when we're making pointer variables. Um, this kind of brings me to another point. I want to show you guys one more thing we can do, which is called dereferencing a pointer. And dereferencing a pointer basically means that we're going to grab the value that's inside of the memory address. So remember, a pointer is a memory address. So if I have a pointer, that is a the address of a physical you know slot or a physical location in my computer's RAM in my computer's memory. That's all it is. It's just an address. Right? Like you have an address for your house. That's kind of what this is. It's an address, but instead of for a house, it's for a memory location. Um, and when we dereference a pointer, we're basically telling C++ that instead of using the actual pointer, we now want to go to that physical memory address, grab the value out of there and use it in our program. And the way that I can do that is by dereferencing it. So you'll notice like when I print out P age, right? This is a pointer. So when I, when I run this program and I print it out, we get a memory address. But if I was to dereference this pointer, we would actually end up getting the value that was stored at that memory address. So if I put an asterisk here, this is what's called dereferencing a pointer. So I could say asterisk p age, and now we'll be dereferencing the p age pointer. So now instead of getting that memory address when I run this program, we're going to get the value 19 because that is the value at the memory address that the pointer was storing, uh, the, the, that the pointer was representing. So I'm gonna run my program and you'll see down here we get 19. So when I get rid of this asterisk, we get the memory address. When I put the asterisk here, we're dereferencing the pointer. So we just get 19 and that's kind of how that works. So hopefully that makes sense. I wanna show you guys one more thing. So dereferencing is really useful. And if I just said, for example, like ampersand GPA, right? GPA is this variable up here. It's storing the value of 2.7. This is a pointer, right? So this is going to give me the memory address. So over here, when I run this, we get this memory address, but I could just dereference this. And hopefully this kind of shows you guys what we're doing. So I can just put an asterisk here and this is going to dereference this entire thing. So now this asterisk is dereferencing this pointer and we should end up getting the actual value, which is 2.7. So you can see we get this value and you could, I mean, you can kind of chain these together. Not that you'd want to, but I could say like ampersand and now we'll get the memory address again. So that's kind of how that works. And you know, pointers and uh, you know, working with pointers, doing stuff with pointers can be really useful in C++. This is also a very useful concept in another language, which is called C and C is actually the programming language that C++ is based on. Um, and you use pointers a lot in that C language, but they're also important in C++. And if you're going to be a C++ developer or programmer, you need to have a, at least a baseline understanding of what pointers are and how they work. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what they are. Remember, essentially pointers are just types of information. It's just another type of data that we can use in our programs. We can print them out. We can use them. We can store them inside of variables. And we can also dereference them as you saw. Um, earlier in the tutorial. So hopefully that helps and hopefully now you can kind of play around with pointers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.